Peggy 18. Hi guys, welcome to a playthrough of the Streets of Hope level from Hitman Absolution. My name is Travis, I'm on the community team at uh, IO Interactive in Copenhagen. And I'm with uh, the game director, Tor Bluestown, who's here with me. Hey, and uh, hope you'll enjoy this uh, speedy playthrough of this very large level from uh, Hitman Absolution. Yeah, we're going to play through it in uh, 17 minutes. It's a bit of an expert playthrough, you have to know you have to know your way around the Streets of Hope to be able to pull it off to this level of um, accuracy and efficiency. But um, to give you a bit of intel on where we are and what we're doing, we're um, obviously Agent 47, he's gone rogue from the ICA. He's on the trail of a girl called Victoria. Um, the lead that he's got to get to this point is uh, he's following a guy called Lenny the Limp Dexter. He's the son of Blake Dexter, the benefactor of this town, so he's a pretty important character in the game. Um, Lenny knows about the whereabouts of Victoria, and he's also told his gang, he's with the Cougar gang, his little uh, posse that he rolls with, you could say. So we need to take those five guys out, we need to get to Lenny, we need to kidnap him, um, all within this one level, so it's there's a lot happening here. Yeah, this is a, it's a pretty huge environment, and it's all pretty kind of free roaming, you can kind of go around and uh, scope out the situations, find different uh, elements that you can use to your advantage, um, there's a lot of kind of improvised weapons around, there's a lot of different disguises and uh, and there's to every single hit it, within this level there's a large amount of entry points to it. So here we're uh, homing in on our, on our first target uh, which is the leader of the gang. We've kicked off already, we've had a scope of the land, we know what's, we know a little bit about hope so far. Our first target is going into the convenience store here, so we're going to follow him in the back entrance and see how we get on. Yeah, so as this is a more, you can say it's it's a large part of the, it's a, this is a large level within the game and as you can kind of walk around freely, also everything you do will, they will kind of cascade out if you're kind of causing trouble here. I mean, theoretically you could take down your target straight away here and kill his girlfriend uh, in the same time. But you will have to deal with the consequences of that and if anyone here shouting or gunshots, they will come running and try to find out what it is. So rather than take him down, uh, down here, we'll wait for him to go upstairs. Use a distraction here to get past his girlfriend. So the, the most immediate thing that we can see is a radio. So we've, tr we've triggered the radio one, which of course she's, the, the clerk here is going to be thinking, well, who's, why is there a radio playing? She's trying to see who it is. And we've managed to get away and kind of sneak past her now. As she's confused or looking at the radio, we're in the trespassing zone here, so we need to be careful not, that, not to be seen. Yeah, so if you're trespassing within the game, it doesn't mean that you're instantly dead if you're found. It means that you will be kind of escorted out of the premises. But of course now, since this is one of the targets, he's standing in front of some very compromising evidence of um, this cougar gang trying to kidnap this girl, Victoria, and sell her off to an arms company. Then you will probably be killed on sight here if, if seen by this guy. Yeah, he'll definitely react if he sees you, so we need to sneak up behind him. We're going to take him down with the, with the fibre wire silently so nobody hears us and we've got objective complete we need to uh, dump the body because his girlfriend will probably be uh, coming up to see where he is pretty soon yeah so hiding hiding evidence or hiding bodies uh, as part of that is of course it's good for kind of erasing your tracks and uh, it it's all kind of uh, tracked in our uh, in our score everything that you do is logged and uh, you kind of uh, get you get a positive or negative score based on how you're playing and, and uh, using the different features of the game. And being undetected or being unseen and not, how to say, uh, not leaving any traces behind is a, is a very good good way of playing. Yeah, and all, all of that information is stored in the notebook that we just saw on the screen. With uh, It also keeps the challenges, right? And it keeps um, the targets, your objectives. It's pretty much as if um, 47 was keeping a, a physical notebook as he goes along of what he's seen, what he needs to do. Yeah, so for those that know the old Hitman games, they know that there always was a mission briefing as the start of every level. That's slightly different in Absolution as 47 is far more the driver of the story than any other Hitman game. The way that these objectives are made is also based on his progress through the level, so they will kind of update along the way 
with the information that he gets and the player gets as uh, as they play the level. Yeah, he's very much making the decisions himself, isn't he? When he's got um, obviously, if something happens, he realizes he needs to take out somebody else. He doesn't need somebody in his ear to tell him that. He's seen it for himself. He's heard a conversation, so it's uh, it's very dynamic in that sense. Yeah. So actually, for this level, as you enter, you only know that Lenny the Limp has to be kidnapped. But as you as you enter the level, you find out okay. There is these guys, these this cougar gang, and they know way too much about Victoria, so they also have to be taken out. So this is an objective that you won't really know until you actually come to this place in the level. Or until you watch this video and we tell it to everyone. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so here, as you can see, there is things lighting up an instinct that you can use as a player. Some of them are uh, hiding places, other things are um, objects that can be used to cause an accident. And especially with the targets, of course, it's very useful if you make it look like an accident. Then they won't even they won't even be looking for a killer if they didn't even know it was a murder committed. And uh, the instinct as well. You're about to trigger it here as well. You can see the targets, or well, the NPCs are lining up as well. And we saw when we came past there was a, a little icon for a hint. It's. Um, for those of you, you can obviously see that we're not playing in purist mode, our difficulty where you get no help from the game at all. All of these options can be turned off if you want a, a real challenge. So um, bear that in mind as you play through, that if, you're, if, you, if, you're, if you are a purist player and you really want the, a really difficult experience, you can customise it that way, if that's the sort of uh, thing that you're looking for. But to show off the features, we're going to keep the HUD on for this playthrough. <laughs> so we're approaching our second target here. He is on the phone. And uh, an easy prey for a trained assassin. And instead of just killing him off straight away, we will kind of subdue him and uh, try to make it look like an accident here actually by uh, using the explosives that we found earlier. So we had the option to snap his neck as well. That's if, uh, if we're running short of time or if we just feel like being a bit more brutal through the level, isn't it? It's very much about choice, right? All the different mechanics are built to create sensible choices for the player. If, if you want to be brutal, if you want to be uh, violent, you can do that, but it will affect your scores and your, uh, your challenges. Oh, you're not Dusted. To be here. <laughs> Alright, we'll deal with this. You're under arrest! <laughs> Ow. So, one thing that we, that we worked a lot on with our AI is that the propagation of knowledge throughout the level that this guy, we took care of him really fast, so it meant that anything he had to say to his friends on the radio, he didn't get the time to, to say anything at all. And uh, that meant that nothing actually got conveyed and we were free to continue throughout the level as if nothing happened. Yeah, it was, it was perfect timing from 47 really in a way because the, the police the police officer's not going to start shooting us straight away just for being in the area. He needs to you can hear him shouting, he's saying, what are you doing? And then before he's got a chance to kind of realize that we're not going to move and that we're a bit of a shady character, we've killed him. So it's, uh, yeah, we move on from there. So here we're using the, the remote detonated explosives that we found. And uh, as you remember, the target we dropped down, the, the one that is just knocked out, he's over there by the tires, and now he is dead, as you can see in the target tracker. That was quite a big explosion. The, the, the other cars there have caught fire, so this could, uh, this could get interesting. Yeah, this is not very subtle, uh, but it does cause a bit of a stir in the town, and it will draw the attention of especially all the guards or, or cops, as you can see here, they come running, um, which leaves the next target a little bit easier to get to, because he has been, he is quite heavily guarded. He's kind of like uh, the king of the scrapyard, as you'll see here very soon. So the streets, the street, this end of the street now is a lot more empty than it was when we first arrived and took a look around. So there's, there's definitely more freedom here for us. We can see the target there. He's roaming the scrapyard as he does. The king of the scrapyard, as it were. <laughs> and you can see the explosion was absolutely huge. The black smoke is pillowing upwards past the, uh, the big poster of Dexter there, the benefactor of Hope, as we mentioned earlier. But we uh, now need to head into the scrapyard. You can still see the target just on the, on the screen there. We've got a sign, warning, keep out, dogs. So we should, uh, should be careful. Yeah, dogs are uh, also a feature of the game. They will alert nearby NPCs, as we see here. We're trying to sneak up on one, and 
Obviously, we're not allowed to be here, even if we had a disguise on, this dog would bark on us. And uh, so we, we've, we've grabbed the dog bone. We think that he might have been barking for that, or he's, <laughs> or he's noted us. He, he might be just want to get a chew on the bone, but the barking has actually alerted an NPC. This mechanic here has come across, so we need to be careful. Yeah, so this poor guy doesn't know what'll hit him. I should always check what's behind you. The dog's stunned. Yeah, so as we're trespassing here in the scrapyard, uh, this uh, this mechanic comes in pretty handy as we can take his disguise and uh, move around a lot more freely in this area. We don't have to kind of sneak around because now, as long as we don't get close to the other NPCs, we're actually allowed to be here. Yeah, and we're going to shove him in the closet, keep him out of sight. There's no evidence that he was ever here. We've got our disguise. And we saw the target walking deeper into the scrapyard, so that's where we're going to head now. Yeah, so now dressed as a mechanic, um, it's if you have to get close to other NPCs, it's uh, very useful to blend into the environment and kind of just pretend that you belong here. So as we'll see here, this NPC, he is kind of wondering who you are, but he's not s suspicious yet. But if you kind of would have stayed closer to him for a longer amount of time, then he would eventually have found out, or if there's two or three of them close. Yeah, the mechanics will recognize if it's a, like it's a small town, so they know each other pretty well. So the a bold guy walking around does look suspicious. Why 47 needs to blend in? But of course, the the police officer, he's not so familiar with the mechanics, so he's not going to bust you. But we uh, we're thinking about taking him out with the crowbar here, but thought better of it. Yeah, I think if you pick up that crowbar, he will kind of get a little bit suspicious about you. So uh, it's better to let it let it be. So here, the target's been dealing with some dirty cops and. Uh, He's heading off into this uh, tiny garage over here. I think he is the guy who is in charge of the cars for the gang. That's so it. he's uh, they're Ooh. kind of preparing this this uh, kidnapping of Victoria and uh, he is uh, preparing the car here. And uh, that's an accident waiting to happen as you can see <laughs> in instinct here. It's a good choice of words. <laughs> yeah, accident kills are a very big feature in Absolution and there is a large number of ways of taking down every single target in the game and this is where the team has really went to town on uh, coming up with inventive ways of, of killing targets that are kind of localized to each area. So naturally here in a garage, what better to use hey, than a car lift? Who's screwing about? Oh, oh, okay, oh, alright. Who, who's making the, the racket? Ah! Since the third target down, the target tracker resembles that. We've got three three targets down, a really high score. The police are on the way in to see what's happened. You can hear the mechanics uh, we're a bit worried about this guy who's just been crushed. But we're, uh, we're clear, we're away. Uh, oh, it's got warning attack dogs again, so we have to be careful about that. We're now in the, the cougar's nest. This is like the main hangout area for the, uh, for the cougars. They're there hosting a bit of a party for Lenny. But uh, they're having a barbecue, and, and you might see the lighter fuel there, which could be an option. Barbecues and lighter fuel tend to go uh, pretty well together when Agent 47's around. <laughs> and we can also see the policeman down there. He's uh, he's allowed to be in this area. We're not as a mechanic. It's a bit of a private area, so we're going to try and take his disguise and see if we can get closer to our target. Yes, yeah, so usually these kind of isolated characters are pretty useful for us as uh, they provide disguises and uh, weapons and, hey, and so on. Back, We've just got an improvised weapon there, a bottle. Smash this around the guy's head, smash. He's down, disguise is ready to get picked up. And uh, 47 needs to choose a weapon here. Yeah, so what else to use than an axe <laughs> rather than a tomahawk? <laughs> And we can see why the uh, why the police officer was so distracted there. That was a really perverted guy. And now we have his clothes on. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so dressed as a police officer, we're allowed to get closer to these guys up here. And basically, we only have one of these as a target, uh, the one in the middle. Yeah, Mason. And everyone else, unfortunately, will be collateral in this uh, point shooting, which is one of our new features in the game, allows us to kind of slow down time to a minimum and uh, using our instinct uh, powers take them down instantly and as you can see they're trying to pull their guns uh, to fight back 
but as they're taken down too quickly for that, the whole thing goes down without anyone making a sound as we also use silenced guns for this. Yeah, we've also used all of our instinct though. We, it's very expensive to use point shooting, especially on so many characters all at one time. So there's a lot of strategy involved in when you should use your point shooting. You can't just walk up to any character and shoot them and do it instantly. You have to make sure you do it at the right time, otherwise you run out of instinct completely. But there's a the other targets come out here. He's come to investigate. Probably come back to the barbecue, and he's stunned by the uh, the dead bodies. Oh, poor old guy. Forty seven just killed the barber. Yeah, that's sad. But it's 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 for the greater good. We get uh, we need a new disguise here because now there is a lot of uh, police officers in the building here. So using the barber, which is. Uh, freely allowed to walk around here it's a pretty powerful disguise and as you can see there's lots of characters here so trying to go in here guns blazing would be pretty dangerous and and difficult there is a lot of npcs here you can also see uh, there's a guy a little bit further ahead getting his pistol ready so he's prepared for a shootout but um it would be a bit of a mistake to pull your guns out here sneaking through as the barber is probably the best um the best way through towards Lenny, who you can see down there. Instinct lights up in blue, not red, because he's not a target, we need to kidnap him. And we make our way down. Yeah, so basically now there's there's this one police officer standing between us and, and Lenny at the moment, so we will just quickly deal with him. Quickly deal with him by putting a pair of scissors in his neck. <laughs> well, yeah. deal with him in a 47's trademark. Right? Yeah, you could have subdued him, right? Poor guy. And now we have Lenny all to ourselves, and he's kind of just sitting there lying about his uh, antics in Chicago. So he's kind of an easy prey. It's almost too easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the talkative pap, huh? <laughs> you know your place. <laughs> well, uh, I like that in the barber. That's it, and. Uh, Thanks for watching the playthrough of uh, Streets of Hope from Hitman Absolution, which is out in uh, November 20th this year. Thanks for taking the time to listen, and of course watch 